Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So guys, um, a quick video. Uh, a lot of people were asking via mail, a lot of messages I'm getting on uh, personally on Telegram, WhatsApp and on LinkedIn that uh, can you please cover this? Can you please uh, tell me about how to start automation? And a lot of other basic questions people were asking and it was really difficult to you know, reply them back. So I thought of creating this particular video. So today I have just collected only these five uh, questions, guys. One is uh, uh, how to switch from manual to automation. It's a very, very generic question. Like every single day I'm getting thousands of mails that people are asking that, okay, yeah, uh, how to switch from manual to automation. Everybody is thinking me on LinkedIn also that how to switch, right? Then the second <laughs> uh, very uh, famous question that uh, popular question uh, in my inbox always that career gap. I'm having six to seven years of career gap and then from last seven years or from last three, four years, especially for the US candidate, I'm not working then how to justify that. So I'll tell you what exactly I personally feel that and how to prepare accordingly. Then uh, maybe you can follow the same path and then you can take a, uh, you know, uh, advice from there. And then uh, after automation, what is the next step? That is again, like we have learned some basic level of automation that what exactly we have to do, you know, the next step. Then the future of automation, like, do we have a secure future? Do we have a secure job in test automation or in testing or or will we get the enough uh, amount of salary as compared to other uh, developers or, or whatever that a lot of uh, misconception are there in the market and in your mind. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, I'll try to justify that uh, particular question also. And then the last question is that Naveen, uh, I not interested in Selenium. I really, I'm really scared of uh, uh, Java, Selenium and automation. Can I move from QA to DevOps? That is again something like uh, guys, you have to think what exactly you before asking this question before uh, thinking about this particular career opportunity. So let's take the first question that how to uh, switch from manual to automation. You are working like a, you know, three, four years experience guy, or maybe sometimes I'm getting mails like I'm having a 10 years of experience then uh, I'm totally into functional or, uh, testing. I have never done any kind of test automation, never use any kind of uh, uh, test automation tools. So how to switch that guys? It's although it's very high time. You know that, okay, you have to upgrade your skill set. You have to upgrade tools and technologies in your bucket. So you have to make sure that, okay, you are making your hands dirty. Okay. With different tools over there in the market. So the best thing is that start from the beginning in automation. It's okay that, okay, if you are practicing it properly, you can easily justify your experience with a uh, two years or three years. If you are practicing it properly, practice on the real time application on real time use cases, how exactly we work in real time projects, uh, learn more and more about uh, processes, best practices, uh, design patterns, improve your programming uh, skills over there, and then try to build up the logic that how to uh, design a logic just like a, you know, a real test automation guy like that. So if you are practicing like this, it will take time guys. It will take easily three to four to uh, six months sometimes, but proper guidance, maybe proper training. If you have budget, you can attend the training. Then uh, if you have time, you can spend time more on more video videos, blogging, training, some courses you can take. Uh, please feel free to invest your money in the right direction. One thing I'll tell you that, okay, please, uh, there are a lot of, I'm not uh, criticizing any trainers specifically, but there are a lot of trainers and the courses are available on YouTube or maybe on Udemy. They are just giving you the basic knowledge. They are not actually telling you what exactly we are doing in real time projects because most of the people are freelancer in this particular field who are giving the training. They haven't seen the real time. Uh, they don't have the real time exposure in the market. What exactly we are doing currently in the industry that if I'm asking you that, okay, hey, this is a very uh, complex application. Let's see in some e-commerce application in some e-commerce based company, then you should know how exactly we have to do that. Most of the people, most of the trainer, what exactly they have done that they just create one dummy, a website where some basic components are available and that's just writing that, okay, yeah, web driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver, launching the browser and that's it. With this approach, guys, you will never understand. You will never learn proper automation and you will always struggle because in real time projects, things are quite different. When you go for the interviews, 20 people are sitting next to you for the interviews and then uh, <clears throat> definitely they are much better than you because they have worked on the real time project. So this is what you have to justify. So please prepare it accordingly with the right direction, with the right knowledge, with the right content. In fact, we have seen a lot of uh, mistakes in the content these days that people are not following the right things. Uh, people are sending me the, their uh, frameworks, their framework code. The moment I see that, okay, hey, from where exactly we have uh, copied this particular code and someone said, okay, yeah, some, maybe some Udemy courses or some Git repository or my senior that created that it's totally 
wrong format, no design patterns, no industry standards, no best coding practices. There are so many code smells over there. So please guys, this is not the way that we have to work with automation. We have to learn automation just not for the sake of learning automation. You have to justify your automation knowledge so that we can give the business, we can give the value addition to the business over there. That is the most important thing guys that you have to okay, think about it, please. <clears throat> Second thing is that the career gap of seven, eight years of experience I'm having, then um, and then I left my job six years back or five years back, especially the female candidate in US. They don't have any experience from last five, six years, or maybe they're coming from a totally different background. They are not from computer science background, or maybe they were working somewhere in Bangalore, Pune, in India, and then moved to US. So I would advise that uh, everything is possible. Why not? If uh, If you are preparing well, you are uh, justifying your experience at a time of interview, justifying your knowledge in the form of uh, uh, practices and everything, then definitely you can beat the interviews and you can get a really good job. Only thing is that the hard, that is the hard work and the commitment you have to give at least for next three, four years, three, four months, you have to practice daily basis, spend time, time on weekends, maybe attend some good training and then try to learn that, okay, what exactly, you know, what exactly we do in test automation. Test automation is one of the simplest thing guys that you can easily get into IT with this particular approach. But I'm not saying that okay, you have to use some wrong entry like some uh, proxy or maybe some fake interviews or a fake resume you have to prepare. Go with the positive mindset, be, with, be honest over there and simply say that okay, yeah, this is what exactly I have in my bucket and then this is what the kind of things I know and just justify, showcase your knowledge in that particular form that okay, yes, yeah, this person is actually having some good knowledge, worked upon some good uh, use cases over there during the practice. So definitely they will give you a chance over there. And it's, I'm not just saying just for the sake of saying it, there are thousands of candidates, okay, from my previous batches or from, from the uh, subscriber list also that a lot of people, they are getting, following the same thing and then getting the job. I'm getting almost like daily basis, I'm getting two to three mails, okay, that saying that, okay, yeah, this is a success story I really want to share with you. So please follow that. So the next question is that uh, after automation, what exactly the next step is? See the guys that you have some basic knowledge of automation. Then first of all, you have to understand that after automation, you really want to switch to the new profile altogether. Like if you really want to get into the management or maybe a development or maybe some UI development or maybe something, some different uh, domain altogether. Let's say you want to become a PO or product manager or maybe a business analyst. You are not liking automation or you're not happy with automation or testing profile. Uh, definitely you can go with that after automation i would advise you that if you have the basic knowledge try to learn some advanced things in automation best design patterns try to follow the best practices in the industry that okay yeah uh, try to you know get the hold of different types of tools available in the market maybe one or two programming languages also you can get a command after maybe java or python or c sharp or javascript you can learn there's a plenty of things guys that you can easily do that you can talk okay you can learn about different virtual control systems you can get the hold of uh, CI CD pipelines. You can get the hold of uh, performance testing tools that how exactly we set up the environments and everything. You can do some certification with respect to uh, cloud certifications and uh, uh, AWS uh, certification or architect certification that you can do that cloud architect or maybe cloud practitioner or maybe the cloud expert you can become over there. These certificates are having very high demand in the market. I would advise you, please do not run behind the run behind the uh, you know IS2QB or maybe some uh, fake selenium certificate someone is giving to you please spend time spend money do some investment and try to see that okay yeah these are the milestones that i have set for next 15 days or maybe two weeks or three weeks or one month these jmeter i have to learn gatling i have to learn i have to learn advanced selenium i have to learn how to uh, write the design patterns and everything how to use the proper patterns to design the framework what exactly other experts or architect level people are doing it actually so try to learn these things guys see still i'm learning and i'm learning daily basis and daily there are plenty of things plenty of new things are there in the market that okay yeah I'm, I'm surprised to see that okay people are much much better having you know better knowledge than us and then uh, they are doing great over there it's really uh you know ocean of knowledge over there that yes people are actually getting the things and really doing great job over there so so please try to learn daily basis. Do not get bored of that. Okay, yeah, I'm, I know everything and now I'm bored now. Let's do something. Let's change the profile, guys. Changing the profile is a big decision in your career. So please, uh, you know, think it twice. 
then uh, future of automation like uh, it's a very silly question future of testing future of test automation what will happen with testing testing will be uh, seleni will be killed and then uh, testing is uh, dead now uh, so, uh, companies are not looking for testing guys it's nothing like that from last 10 years i've been hearing the same thing same statement every year every month every company every social networking site people are saying it okay no testing is uh, dead you don't have any career you don't have any money in testing it's nothing like that guys in fact i can give you tens of examples over there people are making good money as compared to developers also it's nothing like that it's all depend where exactly you really want to go what kind of a career path you have chosen and what kind of type of uh, a decision you have taken at the right time that's very important and then please talk to people please talk to your seniors please talk to industry experts who are actually qa experts in the market take to try to take some advice what kind of career path they have chosen that's why they are having at that particular position that is what me and a lot of other people they also are followed and i can see that okay yeah that is uh, i did uh, some really a uh, right decision i have taken that time 5 years back or maybe 7 years back that's why that okay uh, i actually having some position in the market right now so please try to take this uh, these advices second thing is that guys testing cannot be dead right without testing you cannot release the product without testing you cannot uh, you cannot deliver to the production to the customer you can in this competitive world where uh you know people are talking about a lot of competitions a lot of business customer oriented services are there you have to justify the product that guys otherwise testing is not there then developers they don't have first of all time they don't have that testing mindset to test that particular application so they cannot do testing guys you please uh, like some companies are trying to follow that pattern that okay no we will uh you know remove all the qas convert them into sde or maybe sdet sdet to developer profile and then uh, that model was not that successful right i can give you company profile like uh, microsoft they did that and then uh, linkedin also they tried three four years back but that was not again linkedin started hiring qa guys and sdet guys so please try to understand the value of testing is very important and testing is an art it's not like uh, testing is not not at all easy also guys it's not like anyone can do testing no you have a different mindset you should have a proper i would say you know proper approach to test that particular application a very constructive approach with a destructive i would say a mind that you have to test the application if you have that mindset it's having a great career and then keep enhancing your knowledge on different tools skills automation performance databases sql like that please try to learn more and more daily basis every year there is a new learning for that okay so last one is that qa to devops this is what like some people they were asking that uh, uh qa to devops that nabin can we do that actually i i don't want to take uh, his name he actually mailed me and saying that uh, uh i'm really scared of uh, automation and i cannot write any single line of code um i'm uh, um, i'm really poor in uh, you know uh, test automation things in selenium whatever and then can i move to devops you can move to devops but see try to understand that don't you know say the blunt statement over here first you have to do your own homework do your own research what do you mean by devops if you are not happy with selenium automation and you are not ready to learn the things over there and the technology and the tools and the uh, programming over there then how can you work with the devops thing devops is more advanced in terms of uh, development plus operation activities you have to do that you have to be really good in your uh, you know cloud practices you have to be really good in your scripting languages uh, shell programming python uh, javascript Uh, PHP, uh, uh, Perl, these kind of languages you have to learn. You should know that okay, how to uh, uh, you know set up one IP infrastructure over there with the help of shell scripting. And if you if you have that fear in your mind, then how can you become a DevOps? So please don't run behind the a uh, title or maybe someone has told you. My uh, my friend has uh, told me that okay, no testing has no future, so you just get into DevOps. If you really want to get into uh, DevOps, definitely just go for it. But please. at least try to see that where exactly and what exactly people are doing what exactly the career path over there what are different things i have to enhance okay in me that so that you need some really good soft skills you really need uh, some collaboration skills over there in terms of uh, tools technologies also a lot of things you have to learn a lot of uh, devops activities you have to do in terms of ci cd pipelines jenkins uh, build and deployment process you have to set up over there and for small small configuration you have to do uh you know you have to write some script over there right so let's see i really want to transfer my file from this server to another server 
from a stage two production environment and some certificates I have to deploy over there. In that case, you have to write some basic level of let's see Python script or uh, or some analytics you have to write. And in that case, you have to use a concept of Python or maybe some artificial intelligence so that you can uh, set up the artificial repository for the entire organization at the at the company level at the org level. So I'm just giving you these couple of examples. You have to work like a uh, you know a cloud expert over there. If any a production is down, you should know that, okay, hey, how to dig into the server and how exactly we can, uh, you know, restart the server and what exactly the problem in terms of configuration and the environment. So it's a very responsible job. I would advise you spend some time on uh, testing, try to learn what exactly we are doing, try to learn uh, in terms of automation and then test automation for test automation engineers. It will be easy to move to DevOps after a couple of years or maybe after uh, five, six years where you get the comfort level, get the confidence, you have seen the industry, you have seen the real time projects, then it will be easy for you guys to, you know, uh, move to uh, DevOps activities and DevOps uh, uh, things over there. So guys, I would uh, advise you, please don't say these blunt uh, decision or blunt statement that, okay, yeah, I really want to get to DevOps because uh, uh, someone has told me. Please do your research. Same thing for developers also. If you are really scared of uh, test automation, then in development, you have to design a lot of things over there. You have to write the system. You have to design the system. You have to develop the logic, more and more complex logic that you have to develop over there. More and more tools, technologies you have to learn over there. So ultimately, end of the day, you have to work with the different uh, tools, technologies, programming, patterns, data structures. You have to uh, use the best algorithms over there optimize code and all those techniques you have to learn. So please try to learn all these things and uh, then you are good to go. So hey, that's all like uh, these are the different uh, four or five video of topics I really wanted to cover. It was really difficult to you know mail everyone. So I thought uh, thought of creating this. If you have any other question in your mind, please write in the comment section. Definitely I'll try to pick in the next uh, video like this. We can prepare something like this so that you know we will have the more a better communication via the videos instead of writing the email or something like this. If still you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section and you know my email ID and you know the Telegram group and the Facebook page group. Please join those groups. Feel free to ask uh, the questions and your queries over there. I would be happy to help you guys. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and please click on the bell icon to get the notification for the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Keep watching Navin Automation Labs.